take this. All of you. And eat up. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. The resumption of public masses is the first subject we will address on Corpus Christi 20. I am Guillermo Ramis, as always, happy to be here with you today, Monday, May 4th. Before we start, let us pray to the Queen of the Holy Rosary, Our Lady of Fatima. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Most Holy Virgin Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, you were pleased to appear to the children of Fatima and reveal a glorious message. We implore you, inspire in our hearts a fervent love for the recitation of the rosary by meditating on the mysteries of the redemption that are recalled therein may we obtain the graces and virtues that we ask through the merits of jesus christ our lord and redeemer amen in what country is fatima located a france b spain c italy or D, Portugal. Woke up this morning with a pep in my step thinking, well, this is the last week that I have to celebrate Mass with only a few people in the congregation. I am so looking forward uh, to us getting back together again next week on Monday, not over the weekend. The weekend masses are private still, at, per the bishop's directives. Um, but we were, we're gearing up. We'll have a special mass on Monday. Don't know what time yet, but of course, we'll have all directives put together uh, to make it a, uh, as safe as possible for all of us. And I, I just want to keep echoing this to be certain everyone hears it. If you're not feeling well, you are not to come to church. Even if it's just a little cold or a little cough, stay home. I mean, that's, please, if you have anything wrong, any ailment, stay home right now. You do have um, the blessings of the bishop to do precisely that. And you have my blessings as well um, to, to stay put, uh, but stay in prayer. I mentioned that at the beginning uh, in my little intro to the liturgy that no matter where we find ourselves, uh, here in this beautiful church of Corpus Christi or in our domestic churches, in our homes, we have the opportunity of having a, a personal touch and a pers personal encounter with the living God. You know, the, the virus and social distancing has not kept us apart from our God. I've spoken to many of you who have actually said you've grown closer to God during this time of pandemic because you had no other things to do or other choices. And so almost in a, a good way though, that you have decided to use your time to grow deeper in your relationship with Almighty God. Our Bishop, Robert Guglimoni, after consultation with the College of Consultors, has decided that the public celebration of the sacraments will return in the Diocese of Charleston. At Corpus Christi, we will resume daily Mass next week, Monday the 11th, at a regular Mass schedule. Sunday Masses will resume the weekend of May 16th and 17th. General absolution of sins will be granted before each Mass through Pentecost since individual confessions may resume beginning the week of June the 1st, with restrictions on how all the sacraments are to be offered. Father Joseph is asking all of us to please cooperate in adhering with the guidelines, restrictions, and requests that we must put into place to assure everyone's safety and to avoid an upsurge of the virus. This will not be a return to normalcy and the way we have always worshipped. It is a gradual and cautious effort to once again worship together and return to the sacraments, but it will take time and patience on everyone's part. For at least through Pentecost and possibly beyond, we must limit attendance in our church to a seating capacity currently being determined in order to provide adequate space for physical distancing. We're working on a plan that will allow us to have masses with physical distancing 
and the other guidelines set forth by the Bishop, the Centers for Disease Control, and the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Our detailed plan is forthcoming, and we will announce it this week. The Bishop has extended dispensation to attend Mass until further notice. No one has an obligation to attend Mass because we are offering them publicly again, and therefore no sin is committed by anyone who does not attend Mass in person. Those who are at risk from the virus because of age or other infirmities are asked not to attend Mass until this crisis is over. Since dispensation is granted, parishioners do not have to attend public Mass, especially if they are over 65, have diabetes, have cardiac or respiratory disease, have a compromised immune system, or have any of the other risk factors identified by the CDC. Put most simply, do not come to Mass if you should not be in groups or even if you are just concerned about the risk of infection for any reason whatsoever. We will continue to live stream Masses as well as other liturgical celebrations and prayer services through the parish website. Please continue to be patient as we ease back into the regular celebration of the sacraments. As of today, the celebration of the Holy Mass is the only sacrament we will start celebrating as a community next week. Nothing else will change until we receive further notice. Still, some of you will think this is too soon, while others have been longing for the day. The detailed plan commencing next week to celebrate the Holy Mass publicly, which the diocese will be providing, has been reviewed by state officials in Colombia, and we are confident that in conjunction with our church plan, the approach is prudent and carefully considered. But while we will do everything possible to provide a safe environment, everyone should be mindful of the seriousness of this virus and continue to take personal responsibilities for their own safety and the safety of their fellow parishioners and the clergy. Fasting from the sacraments and the company of others has been a heavy burden, but we must proceed with caution and diligence. All our sacrifices as a parish, as a community, as a state, and as a nation have been with a concerted effort to preserve life. We must consider this in all we do. Oh, 
sight of my foes, anoint me with oil, my cup overflows, your goodness and mercy shall follow, and I'll dwell with you. church will be open to welcome people back to mass which next week will be celebrated publicly for the first time since the pandemic forced parishioners to watch from home instead in a letter to the faithful dated may 2nd bishop robert guglielmoni announced that the public will once again be able to attend masses around the diocese beginning with daily mass on monday may 11th as society moves forward with the reopening of public spaces, we must ensure that the Diocese of Charleston does all that it can to provide for your spiritual needs and welcome you home. Our primary goal is to approach the lifted restrictions with great care, keeping the safety of all our parishioners and our clergy at the forefront of our decision making. On Thursday, after conferring with the College of Consultors, the priests who advised me on many important matters, I decided to resume the sacraments with in-person daily Mass beginning on Monday, May 11th. Our first Vigil Sunday Masses will be held the weekend of May 16th. We want to have the freedom to participate in Mass together in a peaceful manner, but also in good health. So your pastor will spend the next several days developing a plan on how your parish will operate in the current climate and under the restrictions we have set forth. These restrictions have been developed based on recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, plus mandates from state government and recommendations from those dioceses that have already resumed Masses. Your pastor administrator will communicate the specifics of his plan for your parish no later than May 10th. Although we will do all that we can to provide a safe environment, the risk of contracting COVID-19 will still exist. Therefore, I am still granting dispensation to those who are uncomfortable attending weekend mass and those who are high risk until further notice. We are all hungry to receive the sacraments once again. This time away from the Eucharist has been painful. And for so many, that struggle has been compounded by the loss of income and freedom for our families. These new guidelines may be challenging, so I ask everyone to do their very best to adjust to the new normal together as one family in faith. May God continue to bless each of you in this season of the resurrected Lord. In the Lord's peace, Most Reverend Robert E. Guglielmoni, Bishop of Charleston. Our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the foot of the cross were united with Jesus' suffering, and preserved in your faith. Protectress of the Roman people, you know our needs, and we know that you will provide, so that as at Cana and Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father, and to do what Jesus tells us. For he took upon himself our suffering and burdened himself with our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. During the past weeks, the parish has removed the old carpet in the church building and installed new ones, as well as repainted the floors under the pews. We're also in the process of fixing and replacing the air conditioning units of the church building. Thanks to the generosity of our great parishioners of Corpus Christi. The Corpus Christi Bible Study started presented today, May 4th, the video series Nooma, featuring Christian teacher Rob Bell. Nooma is a series of short films that explore our world from a perspective of Jesus. You are extended an invitation to search 
question and join the discussion, please visit the Corpus Christi website for more information. Thank you. My God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you, who I should love above all things. I firmly intend, with your help, to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Our Savior Jesus Christ suffered and died for us. In his name, my God, have mercy. Amen. Mother's Day is a special day when we can celebrate our mother's love. Whether your mother is living or now rest in peace with the Lord, you can show your love for her by joining Father Joseph in a special gift of prayer, honoring all mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, spiritual mothers, wives, mothers-in-law, or anyone who has opened their heart to another at our blessing of mothers. This special celebration will take place during the Holy Mass on Sunday, May 10th. The gift of masses is eternal. So if you would like to include a mass intention on Mother's Day, please visit the parish website. Blessed Seferino Jimenez Mana, born in Spain to a Catholic Romani gypsy family, was known as El Pele, the strong one and the brave one. He had a successful business buying and selling horses. Seferino and his wife had no children, though they adopted one of his wife's nieces. He attended Mass frequently and joined the secular Franciscan order. Always generous to the poor, he was known as a reconciler among gypsies. During the Spanish Civil War, he was arrested for defending a priest who had been dragged through the streets of Barbasco for having a rosary. As the firing squad prepared to kill him, Seferino clutched his rosary and cried out, Viva Cristo Rey! Long live Christ the King. When he was beatified in 1997, thousands of gypsies attended the ceremony. Seferino showed everyone that Christ's love is not limited by race or culture. The daily living out of his baptism prepared Seferino for making the supreme sacrifice of his life, teaching us that all are called to holiness, which is attained by keeping his commandments and remaining in his love. The world needs proud warriors animated by their faith. Warriors like St. Paul and St. Luke who risked their names, their reputations to take their faith, their love for Jesus into the world. God is calling each one of us, each one of you to do great things, but how often we fail to respond dismissing it as some mental blurb. It is time for our generation now to accept that call, the call of God urging all of us to give ourselves entirely to Him, to see that gentle hand guiding your path. But you first must make the commitment to start praying, to fast, to meditate, on the Holy Scriptures and to take the Holy Sacraments seriously. For we are a culture now in decline. The people in danger of succumbing to our excesses. Our whole world is entrenched in sin. And there in the quiet of our hearts, God is calling out to us each one of us to give ourselves entirely to Him and how often we ignore Him, ignore that sweet call. The great Saint of Auschwitz, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, said that indifference is the greatest sin of the 20th century. Well, my brothers and sisters, it is the greatest sin of the 21st century as well. We must shake off this indifference, this destructive tolerance of evil. It only our faith in the wisdom of Christ can save us, but it requires warriors 
ready to risk their reputations, their names, in our very lives to stand for the truth. Set yourselves apart from this corrupt generation. Be saints. Every man dies. Not every man truly lives. You, 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 we all must fight for that authentic freedom and live, my friends. By God, we must live. This is all for today. On behalf of Father Joseph and the parish office, I am Guillermo Ramis. We will see you again on Wednesday, May 6th. May the Lord continue to protect and bless you all. Thank you.